So Alan Dershowitz has oddly been just a staunch, consistent defender of Donald Trump, essentially in the face of pretty much fucking anything, honestly, pretty much anything. But what you're going to be seeing here, now, Paul Manafort was put in jail because he was caught witness tampering, and he was on bail. He was on bail. He was given bail. But on bail, he's witness tampering and fucking up the entire trial. So he was placed in jail. His bail was revoked and put in jail. But let's see what Alan Dershowitz says. Well, you know, there are thousands of people today in jail before they've been convicted of any crime, many of them minorities, many of them poor. Now Paul Manafort joins them based on an indictment. And indictments are not supposed to have any real impact. Uh, we still have a presumption of innocence. Under the law, Manafort is no more guilty of contacting witnesses or attempting to obstruct justice than any of us. The government says he did it. He says, no, he didn't do it. He didn't know there were witnesses, and his conversations were entirely innocent. Mm -hmm. Why does the government get to win without a hearing or without a trial? Why did they get to put him in jail where there's going to be an enormous pressure on him not only to sing, but perhaps even to compose, as one of the judges mm -hmm. put it? I think it's very, very unfair. He's not the only person in jail today for uh, uh, being indicted. There are tens of thousands of people. So, Professor There's something very wrong with the system that presumes guilt this way. Well, is this... It's pretty crazy to me because it took a Paul Manafort jailing for a totally reasonable reason, right? It took that to get him to talk about minorities being put in jail without being able to pay for bail, uh, all of these different things and poor people. And that's a huge problem. And I'd love to, you know, I think that's a problem we really need to do. But this is not an example of those cases. He was out on bail and the bail was revoked because he was tampering with witnesses, which puts the trial, it puts the trial and the investigation in jeopardy. That's what it does. So he's a flight risk. So you had to put him in jail. He was already on bail. So you revoke that shit. Okay. You can't witness tamper. I don't understand what you're saying. No, I don't even know if he's really actually put with them. Apparently, he has his own section or some shit. This is insane, dude. I mean, I've never seen... It. This really shocked me because it's like, how how crazy can you become? Like, defend being a consistent defender of Trump, I have no respect or, like, nothing for Alan Dershowitz anymore. I pretty much had none anyways, but the fact that somebody who is, a, you know has been a professor for, what, 50 years or some shit like that? Someone who could be a professor of law for so long, but, you know, go on Fox News to spew just complete basic bullshit? I've never heard that in my, I've never heard that in my entire life. You have to hold him indefinitely because he's destroying the trial. What the fuck are you supposed to do? What the, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? He was on bail, it gets revoked. This is some really, really basic shit. And the fact that this guy, I mean, there has to be something going on behind the scenes. Because there's no way that somebody who's been a professor for almost, you know, I think it was like 50 years, right? Or 30, 50 years, whatever, can say this is just purely insane. And it goes to show you how, how hard, how hard and how difficult it is to defend Donald Trump and the crooks and the money launderers and the just law-breaking buffoons in this administration.